Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we are back for week two with our little cocker puppy. We decided on a name. We're going to call him Snips El Tesoro Underfoot. Call name will be Trip. It's uh, very fitting. We took a trip to go get him. Ta-da! But also everywhere we go, he is pretty much underfoot. He is one step and you're like, stop, 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 stop. I've almost killed myself and him about 13 times in the last seven days and we thought this is the only name that we can give him. Trip it is. We're gonna get started with today's session. Now, in the first week, as we followed along with the course, we have charged the clicker, and that is all we have done for training this week, each meal. There's been a handful of meals where he's been a little less focused. Those meals got cut just a smidgen short, but since then he has been very focused for meals, which is what we can utilize that now moving into week two and three. And following along with the course, you'll see the big part of training this week is going to be working on obedience goals. So we'll be working on targeting for recall, sitting and place training. As we work through these, we're only going to work on one per session, but feel free to mix them up as you go. So day one, you can work on targeting. Day two, you can work on sitting. Day three, you can work on place training and then keep them, because you have two training sessions per day, just keep them separate to individual sessions, only working on one per session. We'll move into differentiation and things like that down the road. Now, as we've progressed as well, this last week, we've just been doing some socialization based things. I like to refer to it as shadowing. Our little puppies become our shadow and most are pretty good at this for the first one to maybe three or four weeks. But anywhere we go, they just go with us. And he being a more dependent breed in a retriever, little tiny retriever, flusher body, he's pretty good at sticking with us and probably more so than what our short hairs are. Now, as this, um, as far as what this means, he goes to town in a crate. He's getting access to car rides. He goes to on a little four wheeler buzz with us. He gets out with the other dogs and he's building confidence and getting better at going straight out to go to the bathroom, running with the other dogs, not being startled by them at all now. And all of that is building in his just overall socialization as a dog in his new life. Okay, we're doing each training session, one in the morning, one in the evening, and today we will be starting to demonstrate what um, targeting looks like. That's the most natural progression. It's gonna work on recall, and it's essentially encouraging what he's been doing the whole time, but there are a couple small nuances that we're going to be doing with targeting that I wanna point out as we go. After we get done with this training session, he'll be uh, full belly and had a little bit of activity and work and exercise and we'll sit down and do a quick nail trim because we need to be doing those weekly um, and I think if we look at his nails we can probably get away because they haven't grown a ton we can probably just get away with grinding them and um, as he grows up we'll have to get into trimming more as well now uh, trip are you ready to get started have his meal, he's eating one cup and I have a clicker. You can use a cup or a bowl or something to that effect. Now, if you are right-handed, which a good majority of people are, not everybody, but you're going to be, even if you're left-handed, this is important, okay? I do this. I catch myself all the time doing this, okay? When he's full grown and we start working on healing, I'm gonna want him on my left side. And that's a thing that happens with you typically are going to have your gun in your dominant hand and your dog then in your off hand. Now, what I'm encouraging is him to come to my right side over and over and over again. So if you catch yourself doing this, you need to make the adjustment, okay? I'm going to start bringing him over here. Now, this is what charging the clicker looks like. He's just eating food out of our hand. And why this is such an easy transition into targeting is because you saw right there, there was no food in my hand and then it comes afterward. He's following, I mark the second his little nose touches my hand and then there's some more food. Things to be keeping in mind as this is working is any naughty behavior that you see 
we need to eliminate. So I've been able to do some of that over the, the last week. Good. But this jumping up on me to get the food now, this kind of stuff, we have to pay attention to it and we have to start to eliminate it. Hold the food out away from us a little bit more and then keep a closed fist and slowly open it as he's just kind of nosing nicely, not biting my hand. Good, you saw him look for a second and go, hey, there's no food there. And then recognize I need to come in and touch to get rewarded. It's a really, really cool training session here with Trip. He's doing a great job. Good. If you can do it stationary like this, it's a good thing. As your dog gets really good, or if they're struggling a little bit, you can move around more. So we can do one there. And then we can turn here. Good. You're keeping his focus as you walk around your training space. Good. Now also, again to point out, I am encouraging him coming to my left side, which is ultimately where I'm going to want him to be. This is building lots and lots and lots of reps. He knows where the food is, right? Good. Sitting patiently. Sitting is not something we have taught him, but patience is something we've worked on. This right here. He's amped up about the handful of food that he deserves, but we still need him to take it properly. Good. Sitting focused over here. Simple little tip there. Movement. That's why this targeting works so well. It's a big, you know, off colored thing, white hand, or um, it makes, makes it easy for him to pick out movement. And it's attached to your arm and it's easy to move. These dogs are predators, so they see movement and track that really, really well. is that process where he gets the opportunity to think a little bit. What can I do? Oh yeah, that's what I do. Good. <laughs> I love it. Thinking. I'm trying to give him as big a handful as I can without being distracting. So if your dog eats quickly, you can give five, six, seven kibble. Whoa, buddy. That was a horribly timed, that was a horribly timed uh, event. He jumped up on the bowl because I wasn't totally paying attention and I clicked to mark it, wonderful. Good. You can see he's drawn to the right side. He knows where the bowl of food is. But what I was saying is we want to use as um, much dog food as we can uh, he's good with maybe six to eight kibble that he eats pretty quickly. Keep your training session moving. If it takes your dog a long time to work through the amount of food you're trying to give, shrink it. You want to keep momentum, keep momentum going. Good. You can see he's got a really good handle on this targeting, which is why in his next session, I'll start working on sitting. Now, I do want to point out one thing. I haven't incorporated any cue at this point. I want to really get to the point of him demonstrating that he's super solid, okay? At least two to three to four days of being able to do sessions like this before we start introducing a cue. Because it needs to be timed something like this. Because of things like that, he came in close. If I had said here, then he's going to come in and then go away, and then we're not applying the cue to the right behavior. Good. So need him to have a clear understanding of what the expectation is before we introduce cues. Let me give him a second to think. Good. We're almost done with this, excuse me, we're almost done with this bowl of food. Oops, dropped one. I want to minimize the, if possible, the amount that gets dropped on the ground, because I see some people do this too and it becomes a game of, oh, you did it, and we toss one out for them to go chase. Well, that builds a lot of focus around searching the ground and not necessarily paying attention to us. So we try and avoid as much as possible and definitely don't encourage throwing food for them to go get. 
It seems like a fun game, but it pulls a ton of focus away from you as the handler. Now, that may be beneficial. So there is no such thing as a do not ever do this. It's just I would strongly advise against it for the average person. Good. All right, we got about two or three more wraps. That was a bigger handful, but he is very focused on eating. You could do a jackpot in here, but a jackpot isn't gonna help him. I've tried a couple of those. He got close, but didn't touch. I've tried a couple of those and he's not really as good yet eating out of the bowl. So that would actually slow us down in this. He's really comfortable and confident eating here. Got about one left. Perfect. This is a great, 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 great first session targeting. And it's because it transfers so easily from charging the clicker into targeting. And that is why we recommend doing it. The only other thing that we did this week um, was encouraged a little bit of play with toys. And started to do just a smidgen of retrieving. But if you have, um, We'll get him settled here for a second. If you are set up on the online course, you're actually gonna be able to follow along with this process via the checklist, and that'll show kind of what we're doing from week to week. Completely normal for the little squirming wormies to try and do these things. And what we're gonna do is just help get him in a position where he's comfortable. I've got my arm across him, so he's kind of supported here, and we're gonna give him a second to settle. This is only his second nail trim, folks. We're just one week in. Shh, good boy. And it takes a little bit of getting used to. But he's doing a pretty good job taking the time to help him settle before continuing. Take the sharp edges off. This, um, the reason why grinders are so awesome is because that they simulate uh, natural digging and the natural digging process helps quicks recede. And when quicks recede, their nails can stay shorter, which decreases the chances for nail injuries. If their nails get too long, when they're hunting and working hard, they can actually break them. And that is a process that will take days uh, to weeks for the dog to truly be recovered enough that they can go back to work, some different than others, but saw a dog one time in a hunt actually break a nail. We got back to the truck and it, there was blood on the, the tailgate and I could tell that it was bleeding. I found he had broken his nail, but hunted the whole day or that at least that whole field for an hour, hour and a half. And I don't know exactly when he broke his nail because he never slowed down. So that would be a super tough dog, not really typical. Some dogs I've seen be lame for a while a week plus after breaking a toenail completely off. All right, we're just about done here. Just taking a little bit off and that's all you should have to do if you're staying on top of this weekly. Good, so now we'll finish this with a little bit of love and cuddle time. We don't instantly just ex escape the situation and that helps to set a better understanding down the road of Struggling isn't getting you out of this. Laying calmly and relaxing, that's gonna be the ticket. And as soon as you relax, we can finish it up pretty quick and then you're all done. He's chill now. Okay, now let's get him outside to go potty. Thanks guys for watching. This is Trip. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We will see you in his next video.